Okay. Any question? No question. Clock gating. Everybody okay? All right. So I talk about clock gating. Clock. Clock gating. You will see this in your project. Clock gating is a method to gate the clock, right? So where is the clock available? The clock is available when you are designing sequential circuits, or flip flops, um, buff, uh, flip flops and registers. Okay. So in a flip flop or in a register, there will be a signal named as clock, right? And the clock is usually the one controlling the switching, right? So if this clock in a normal in a normal flip flop d flip flop for example you have d you have q and you have the clock internal clock right so this if the clock here is uh, moving at 10 gigahertz this d will also move at 10 gigahertz but you want to reduce power so you want to reduce the transition or the switching so what do you do? If we put in a gate here at the clock, here they put enable at the clock. So only when it's enabled will this D flip flop turn on. So because of this, instead of switching at 10 gigahertz, it will uh, not switch so fast. It will only switch when the enable is turned on. So this clock net toggles less frequently and you have a different frequency, a lower different, a lower frequency, which is known as uh, effective frequency. So this will cause the registers in the internal clock to switch less often. Okay, so let's see how this clock gating, uh, the name is clock gating, it's very easy to remember because you put a gate at the clock. Okay, so this is the example. You have a chip. You have uh, this, this is the MPEG decoder, it has SRAM, it has a digital signal processor, DDE, MIF, and all these other functional. Okay, so if they put the flip flop, 90% of the flip flop, they put a gate at the clock, right? It can reduce the power. Uh, without clock gating, you see here the power is 30.6 milliwatt. And with clear clock gating, the power is much reduced to 8.5 milliwatt. So there is a 70% power reduction by clock gating. All right, next, VDD versus delay and power. So you can reduce VDD to reduce power, but you cannot have everything, right? If there is a, some compromise. So if you want to reduce power, you will increase delay. So if you can see here, this is the dynamic power and you want to reduce the dynamic power. So you go down and go down. Instead of having 2.4 volts, you reduce the VDD, reduce, 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 and let's say you reduce at one volt. But you see now that your delay is three nanoseconds. Okay, so you cannot do that. So there is a point, an optimum point where you have, you can have balanced delay you can reduce the delay and also reduce the power. So this is the optimum voltage point. Okay. Uh, by the way, guys, don't be scared that you have to remember everything. The exam is open book. So you can look at the book, right? And uh, for your midterm, you will have uh, both styles. So you will have the objective and the subjective section. So you can look at your book and uh, and answer the question. And I think I will give a bit more time for you to think on the answer. Okay, just don't discuss with your friends. Okay, guided evaluation, reduction of switching activity by adding latches at the input. Okay, another method to um, reduce switching activity. So everything that we are doing now is we're trying to reduce switching activity here. So we add latches at the input. So here you can add, so you can see here the normal circuit is like this. You have a multiplier and then you have a comparator. 
So here, in order to reduce the switching activity, you put a latch, right, before it goes to the multiplier. So you like hold the, uh, the data here. You save the data here. Only when you want to multiply, you, you switch on, you move the data to the multiplier. Okay, so the latch preserves the previous value of the input to suppress activity. If you do it like this, every time the B changes, it will go into the multiplier and you have to calculate. The circuit has to calculate. But if you put like this, only when you need the output of the multiplier will this data go in to the multiplier. You could also use AND gates to mask inputs to zero or force zero. Okay. All right, next, adaptive dynamic voltage scaling, right? This is uh, together with the voltage, you change the voltage, right? So, for example, you, have, you can slow down the processor to fill idle time. So, if you can see in your CPU or, or the computer, not all the time is the computer active. Sometimes you are opening many windows. So you have window one, window two, uh, for example, right now I'm using PowerPoint and I'm opening a whole bunch of other stuff, but the others are idle. So at the idle time, you can slow down the processor to fit in the idle time, right? So uh, if you slow the, on, slow the processor or slow the frequency on the ones that are idle, you can save power. So this is what you're, in your computer, you have the runtime scheduler and determines the processor speed and selects the appropriate voltage. Okay, so the transition delay for frequency and you can reduce your energy by 10 times by doing this method. Okay, this is uh, the example, right? So for example, if you're doing a task, if you're the task doesn't need uh, so much computation, you can make the speed of the task lower so that you have lower energy, right? So you consume lower energy by reducing the speed and therefore the power will be reduced. Okay? Any questions? Tired already, guys? <laughs> 